welcome to this talk uh, today's session is on who broke the belt how many of here are developers here managers fortunately good to know okay have you ever seen this from your manager i hope uh, everyone as a developer would have noticed breaking a build so then the developer would say how can i actually fix that okay is there any better way of do fixing the broken builds so let's get started so a quick intro about me i'm ram mohan rao i'm a senior software engineer at jfrog india i'm passionate about open source and i love table tennis okay a quick introduction of what jfrog does for people who don't know what so jfrog is founded in 2008 it's a public listed company it has around 1100 employees uh, around uh, nine location with 7000 customer base and six products which has git to k8 kubernetes all hybrid oss and multi cloud uh, we have a universal devops stack and most of these uh, developers are community champions as well okay as you know software runs on everywhere so you can consider on your mobile i think most of you use uh, iphone or android you frequently do an upgrade so google apple uses our backend to push those software updates for you okay so jfrog mission here is to power all the software updates in the world so whenever you use any device you would like to have updates to that so that the latest versions are actually being used okay so to align to that i think most of you have come from these backgrounds where where you have used a waterfall model in to below uh, before 2000 and then in 2000 to nearly to 2010 people still use agile don't mistake be by putting a slide over there saying that it is still 2010 but post that most companies started to do releases daily that's more important so let's get to the agendas today's agenda on the talk so as most of you are here are developers the major concern that people tend to have is how can i actually push my changes to production much faster okay so i would just give an overview of how a development environment would look look like and then cover end to end testing as most developers feel that they run unit test locally but not end to end test so my talk is more focused on how can developers leverage a tool and then use and run end to end test locally and we have a tool called cutil uh, we discovered it and we were fortunate to get uh, direct from uh, direct contact with uh, the maintainer and we were able to uh, understand and uh, integrate into our ci and a quick demo that would be very interesting and a quick summary of what we would be learning okay so an ideal development environment would look like say i might be a developer joining a new team and i might be given a windows laptop or a linux linux desktop or a mac i don't really care when i want to set up my dev environment i should be free enough to set up my environment in such a fashion that it runs on day one so the onboarding process of development experience is something that we need to focus on like when i joined as a developer in most of the com previous companies what we used to do is we used to have a confluence wiki page there would be instructions to set up a dev environment you would copy paste all the instructions and it would take a day or two to set up the environment then most of them are manual i would say and it would run into some issues so let me quickly get into how a development environment should look like it should be a single click automation and it should be able to develop and test locally as a developer 
and it should be as same as production environment. So as I said, I used to generally take a couple of days to set up a dev environment previously. Uh, with automation, you can quickly set it up in, a, in 15 minutes or 20 minutes. So what does automation save here? It saves time and the resources as well. When you, when you have no manual steps, it, it would imply error free. And as a developer, I would like to quickly reload my changes locally. When I mean that, I don't want to deploy it on an external server to test my changes. So I would be able to, I should be able to deploy my changes very local, locally. And the an equivalent, uh, the dev environment should be very much equivalent to a production environment. Okay, let, let us understand the uh, problem that we have with a current feature branch development. I think most of you use Git as a uh, uh, source repository, right? So when, when you develop a feature as a developer who would first analyze the requirements, then create a feature branch, then does his coding around that, and then pushes, writes his unit test, test it, and then pushes the code to a Git repository as a feature request, okay? Uh, but when he does some test, he only does the local unit test, not the end-to-end -end test. And end-to-end -end tests are such a pain that you can't run them locally. And say, as a developer, when I uh, raise a pull request or a feature request on a merge request, the CI would just uh, trigger the end-to-end -end test on that branch on a remote CI CD server, generally. And it would take at least a couple of hours to run the end-to-end -end test. Say if something breaks there, then developer is actually losing a couple of hours to understand what has actually broken, okay? So we thought, I mean, I mean, we were thinking how can we actually solve this problem? Okay, so let me uh, iterate the steps that I'm trying to uh, help you here. Say for example, if end-to-end -end test fail on a remote CI CD server, what a developer would do is he would test it and uh, commit it and then push the changes to a Git repository. And then commit the changes back again and see if it works, but there is no environment to test locally. So the, the pain point is developer is unable to test everything locally. So this round trip com uh, continues and how can we avoid this? So let me quickly uh, quickly uh, take you to the remote end-to-end -end test. See, when a developer writes his unit test, if something breaks, he would, he would uh, fix them and, and commit those changes again and raise a pull request. Mostly the CI CD server runs those tests and the time to come back to the developer is huge. Only when the CI test pass, you, should be, you would be able to review or match the code. So is there any solution that we could think of? Then we started evaluating uh, just a heads up saying that most of our development happen happens on Kubernetes, cloud native. So we were evaluating a couple of tools and see if we can help us to reproduce the same thing. So what we thought was instead of running end-to-end -end test remotely, why can't we leverage a tool or something that can enable us to run the end-to-end -end test very similar to what we can run locally. So how would this help a developer? So instead of actually pushing it, and there might be some environment issues on a remote CI CD server that may not work sometimes. So to, to leverage that, have those end-to-end -end tests locally, then if tests fail locally, you, should be able, you would be able to run those tests commit it, amend it, and then run it and fix it. So what I'm proposing here is, instead of running end-to-end -end test remotely, run those tests locally. So how can we achieve this? So as I said, we discovered a tool called Cuttle, which is a cloud native uh, uh, foundations tool. It's under Kudo Builder, and a tool Kudo, 
and there is a specific Slack channel in Kubernetes called Kudo. You can refer to that. You can probably refer to the references at the at the end. So, what is Cuttle? Cuttle is a Kubernetes test tool. It is basically used for writing tests, mainly designed for testing operators or custom resource definitions, controllers, or simply put it as declaratively test any Kubernetes objects. Okay? And it's YAML based, so you don't need to learn any new language over here. If you are comfortable with Ansible or anything, it should be very easy enough. And it accelerates the ability to set up an environment very easily. Okay? So to get started, how can you actually install Cuttle on your uh, desktop? If you are using a Mac, you can use a brew tap, kudo builder tap, and then brew install Cuttle CLI. If you are using a Linux, you can use uh, kubectl uh, crew install Cuttle. And Cuttle also provides API integration. Say you are writing, you are a Go developer, and would like to integrate it directly into your Go code as an end-to-end -end test framework. Okay? So you can use Go get uh, GitHub kudo builder Cuttle as well. Okay, so Cuttle is, I mean, if I'm a being a developer, what is it used for, okay? So if you're an application admin who wants to automate the creation of Kubernetes clusters, you can still use Ansible for that, but this is more for testing and testing some Kubernetes operators specific uh, code. And if you want to test Kubernetes applications on different versions, okay? And if you are a developer, who would like to easily test operators without writing any specific Go code. So, Cuttle, uh, let me uh, explain how Cuttle framework would, would look like. It has three main objects. One is the test suit. You can see here, uh, it's, a, it's a CRD, custom resource definition, where the API version is Cuttle dev v1 beta 1. And the kind is a test suit. So this is a test suit. And you can see kind start kind as false. So by default, Cuttle uses kind as a local cluster to run all those tests. So if you have a Docker desktop, you can use kind to actually uh, start integrating, start uh, your test suit without having any Kubernetes cluster externally. And I would actually demo the uh, entire test suit and actually how it works. So you can see it also has specific commands where you can actually add commands as a pre-setup thing. Then next is a test step. So you have a suit declaration, then you have a test step. Say I would like to install some specific app and to see whether test, that test has suc successfully thing. So Cuttle has a test step and an assertion as well. So a step would just install or specifically do an API testing around it and assert would do an assertion on the expected values that it needs. Say for example, uh, most probably you would be knowing Artifactory. So uh, as part of my test, I would be installing Artifactory and then asserting whether Artifactory comes up with a single replica, okay? Okay, so this is the test suit structure that I have for my demo. So you can see uh, I have an end-to-end -end test that you can add into your uh, project structure. Okay, so Cuttle by default provides parallel steps as well. So you can run eight parallel tests. Install is one step. Install is one test. Scale is another test. So you, you can parallelly add eight tests that can concurrently run eight. And there is a Cuttle test configurer that I've already shown you. So let me quickly run through the demo uh, and how Cuttle works. That would be interesting. Can you see my screen? Okay, so let me show, show you the project structure here. You can see I have the same structure that I've shown you. And I would like to quickly run a 
test cube ctl cuttle test run okay and what it would do is let me actually show you the code as well so you have the structure that i've shown you so i've set the kind as true and i have my docker desktop running okay and this would mean it would use a kind cluster to set up the entire cluster and run those tests so you could see here it has actually created a kind cluster so let me quickly uh, copy this uh, configuration give me a second i would like to export this cube config file i would like to export this cube config file and i use a tool called k9s which is easy to view the kubernetes clusters okay so it's an open source tool so what i've done is i've actually run two tests as part of my end to end test suite as part of the demo and each test would run parallelly and on a different namespace in a kubernetes so you can see there are two namespaces that are getting created one is cuttle test uh, 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 extract uh, goldfish cuttle test uh, sort cowbird so both of them tries to install artifactory and then do an assertion on top of it so the first is a basic install okay and will do an assertion on the replica count next is the scale thing where you would install artifactory with multiple replicas say the replica count is 2 over here and then do an assertion saying that multiple replicas came up this is this is a simple example of how you can actually test a simple kubernetes object or an application but this can be integrated with with api test or anything to do with so this is anything i mean it is uh, language agnostic i would say so even if you are a go developer or a java or any python developer you can still integrate end to end test using cuttle in your project so let us quickly walk through the demo how it is running so so what is tries to do is first it runs the test suite it you can see it ran a helm repo add and then it is trying to run two test it is trying to run two test one is install another is the scale at parallelly so it is creating a namespace and then installing artifactory uh, you can also see on this k9 tool how this installation is going on the reason i asked you to uh, stop the streaming of the wifi is the uh, artifactory image is around uh, 700 mb 700 mb and uh, which would take probably 5 to 6 minutes to download and install so bear me for few minutes so it's an in the meantime i would actually show you the documentation of cutil so as i said this is a uh, cloud native uh, uh, sponsored uh, even free project and it is built by kudos team and it has a slack channel called kudo and <clears throat> you can see the release cycle and it is very active uh, this is not maintained by jfrog by the way this is something that we have uh, we have been using and we are uh, currently working with the contributor uh, uh, ken saipan he is actually from us <clears throat> so if we have any issues around the uh, cattle uh, feel free to reach out to him on uh, kubernetes slack so and there is a documentation it's very specific to cattle how test so test step and test assertion would work and there are very specific setting how how can you actually integrate any kubernetes cluster not only running it on locally using kind you can use that so let's go back to the uh, see so the artifactory started downloading and it has ran successfully as well so once that test is completed 
it would autom the end to end test would actually delete the namespace as well so let me quickly go back to the configuration part of the test suit where you can see the timeout that we have mentioned is 900 900 seconds so it it nearly took us around sorry it's already done so it took us around 6 minutes to complete the end to end test locally so the main idea around uh, showing a demo of cuttle is this is simple install that we were able to parallelly install two test parallelly test two test without any complication without any complex logic simple easy to use this can be integrated into any language specific any language specific code either go python or java we started using this in our uh, in our uh, internal projects and we were able to see the uh, leverage that it has so it so it completes the, it completely deletes the namespaces as well let me quickly go back to the presentation so the cuttle references are uh, you can see cuttle dev dot docs and there is another github reference that i've shown you and there is a very specific slack channel kubernetes slack channel called kudo where you can post any queries and there is a tool that i've shown you called canines that you can install using brew install canines on a mac which would actually show the graphical view of uh, uh, kubernetes clusters and access them and manage them as well summary so cuttle is a open source tool you can contribute as well it is used for local end to end testing with that we were able to minimize the builds that we broke as part of our code when you test end to end test locally most of the code that you have done the changes as part of the feature branch development would work when we have few broken builds, we can probably release much faster than you could do before. And that would mean happy developers. Any questions? Happy to take them. Sure. Could you please repeat? Yes. No, these run on locally using Docker desktop as a kind uh, Kubernetes cluster. Okay, his question is, we have uh, 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 the test suit that we have configured where we have provided Helm add. Is it running on a specific container or is it running on your local machine? It's running on your local machine. Any further questions? I don't have a question, but this is a very generic thing. It's not very important, but in this case, you might not have an ID, which is one of the things to all of the things you can have for this. So I have to get behind the choreograph. I don't think it's exactly doable anywhere. I don't know which one is like Red Hat. Right, so uh, the main idea around is we should, yeah, the, uh, okay. So his question is, how can developers uh, able to run local setups eff effectively? Uh, how can we actually set up dev environments which are very equivalent to production, right? We have done in our previous company where uh, we had a setup of long setup. We were using RPMs to set up a, uh, our production was using Ansible to deploy RPMs on a production VMs. So we were able to repl uh, replicate using Docker containers. So we were using CentOS uh, Docker base image and we were able to just compare it so that 
For example, I have some shell scripts that we have written on our own that would actually set up Docker containers and install RPMs on top of it. So it's replicating the same thing as, so Cuttle does that very effect effectively on Kubernetes side, on cloud native side. So if you want to set up a Kubernetes in a Go, you need to write Go code to uh, set up, a, set a context and then uh, create a namespace and then do that. I would, uh, 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 I would recommend, uh, I don't think most companies open source most of the uh, dev setups that they have locally, but uh, few companies does that saying that we have done that and you can probably try it out as well. But most of them use containers to do that. Any further questions? Okay, thanks everyone for joining this.